<laughs> Making moves beyond loss. I'm Courtney Lee Smith. I'm Fulton Smith. Making sure you don't get stuck in complicated grief. Today's moving day. Every Wednesday morning, 5.30 a.m. here on Praise Charlotte. Welcome to moving day. <laughs> yes, indeed. Moving day. That's what happens when you go on for a little while. You forget what today is. It's moving day. Oh, that would it. We make it moves, make it moves, make it moves beyond loss. That's what we do on Wednesday. Telling people how to get beyond themselves, stretch themselves, grow. And it is very appropriate to talk about, you know, how people always say, I need to be strong for you. I need to be strong for you, man. I don't need you to see me cry. I don't need you to know this hurt me. I don't want you to know I got pain. Sing it. Yeah, you know, sing it. Don't be a funny bunny. <laughs> trying to sing. No, I'm not going to do that to the people. Please don't. No, I'm not going to do it to them. So the thing is, what does that really mean when somebody say, I want to be strong for you? Mm, man, several different ways. You know, and the one means something. You know, it's uh, first, man, you, you, all, you always you need to explain that because we just say that because it's a, it's a word or, or what I do, or do, you, do you really mean it? Because, you know, a lot of individuals say that just because it sounds good. Because really, you need to be strong for, yeah, I need to be strong for you, but the most important part. Your foundation had to be solid. You know, yeah. you can't be strong for nobody when your bricks is sitting down in some mud and stuff. And you paint up, you paint up somebody's taking them mentally or physically taking more bricks than both of y'all gonna fall. And see, I like the fact that you see it mentally or physically because I think that's where people miss out on. Okay, all of us are strong in different areas, but then when things happen, it's okay if we feel a little spiritually weak or a little shaken, or if we feel a little emotionally weak or a little shaken, even a little mentally, you know, weak or a little shaken. But the thing is, when we are pretending, oh, that's putting on faces so people don't know that we hurt, that we feel pain, and it, and it makes me think about when you like when you stretch a muscle. But you keep on doing what you were doing. You said your muscles. You know I have done that before, but today, baby, these muscles are working real good. Mm -hmm. whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. But you know, like when you stretch a muscle, you know, like when you go to the gym and you stretch a muscle and you know it hurt and you can't go back and work that same body part the next day. You got to give it a break. But the thing is, you know, not to pretend to be strong. You know, to either work out a different body part. Or to do something different, or it just meant you need to take a little time off, and that's what I'm asking y'all to do in that area. Say I need a little emotional rest, I need a little mental rest, or I need to go to the gym because in this area I'm a little weak. And when I say to the gym, y'all know I'm talking about take a visit to yes, God, yes. or take a visit to mm -hmm. a counselor, a coach, or a therapist who has some exercises that you can implement so you don't have to fake being strong or hide out when you cry because you don't want people to know. And this is where, us as a society, we have really become stuck. You probably going to say, well, see a psychology. You tell them they need to go with an open book, too. An open mind, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean by that, because you, you don't want to go into one or two pages. You don't want them to know the other three or four pages is. Because you won't get help then. You know? Oh, yeah. You got to tell your whole story. Tell, tell people story. what you're what you working mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Because usually it's not just that one incident. That one incident just stirred up a whole lot of other mm -hmm. things. Yes. You know, and so once kind of, you know how they say one weak link come about, you realize the whole chain was never totally yes. strong yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And that's when you can go back and fortify your whole chain because you explain the different things that are going on. So, yeah, be able to bring it all to the table. Be able to give it voice. Don't be ashamed of your story. Tell it. And why do I say this? Why do I say don't be strong for other people? So I want you to know, because a lot of times um, parents say this for their kids. Oh, I don't want them to know this hurts. I want to be strong for them. But the only problem is we're teaching them how not to process grief in a healthy way because you're not allowing them to do it because you don't allow them to see you do it. So we're actually holding ourselves to a standard that's not realistic because I know we've um, got these big things. Never let them see you cry. 
but you know, you say something that's interesting, you know, you say the parents don't want to uh, really see them cry. Uh, uh, when, you, when you tell them your kid that's a uh, life of teaching. So, you know, I just think, I just look at that and say, yeah, life will teach you what you got to say. That's why I go. But yeah, look at the other side too. Your parents haven't been taught neither. So they probably don't know how to teach their kid a certain part of life they're supposed to be taught. How to grieve? Yeah, how to grieve. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you're not sure, faking it, if something hurts or something feels not quite right, that's when you talk about it. And that's what I'm saying. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to pretend that it doesn't hurt because that, that pretending keeps you from going through a process and then you take it out in a different way. Because I know people who are truly hurt and they take it out on their kids because they miss their spouse and they're looking at the kid. And this might not even just be death. It could be separation and divorce. You're looking at that child and you have anger. You have regret. You have remorse because of a relationship that is already dead and gone. But you haven't went to the school of learning how to process your grief. And there are some very specific strategies. I mean, y'all can jump over on our IG at Grief Garage, or you can text us at 678-718-5019 if you want some more healthy grief conversations beyond today's making moves. Definitely hit us up on the Instagram at Grief Garage or text us at 678-718-5019 to get a little bit more information. And, and another part too is you have to talk about it and make sure they, they know this because it's not going to work if they don't recognize this. When they come in for counseling or uh, they want a rehabilitation, what kind of title you want to do, they have to do two things that's very important release the pride and release the ego. Yeah. You bring them to and it's you wasting your time and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the person that's trying to. Counsel you, you're wasting their time. So for you coming to the door, for you, my thing, my going into that 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 situation, you're looking for counsel. You first yourself have to get your get rid of your your brother and sister, which is your ego and pride. And, and when you talk about pride and ego, that that is pretending to be strong. Mm -hmm. Because it won't allow you to for people to see you cry. It won't allow you to see people in a vulnerable state. Um, we we all have places of vulnerability, no matter how. And a lot of people think, well, if I have questions about grief, that means I don't believe in God, and that means I don't have faith. And you know, as Christian people, we don't want people to question our walk. Not but Christian it, people, so-called Christian people, because a real Christian person will understand. Yeah, because the thing is, there are questions on the wall. There are always questions on the wall. Because if you've gotten to the point that you never have conversations with God or never have any more questions for God, that means you've stopped listening to God. So the thing is, there are always questions. He always has answers because the thing is, he wants you to come to him weak. So if you're pretending for everybody else, are you pretending to be strong for God as well? Yes, they are. Yeah, you and yeah, because you are pretending to be for God, uh, pretending to be strong for God. But uh, let's flip the let's flip the strip a little bit. Flip um, it in reverse. Um, we as a society, mm -hmm. we 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 cause this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, you know, let's let's do it with a relation standpoint. Um, this guy meeting this this young lady, mm -hmm. and she got high expectation. For mm -hmm. herself and for the individual that she involved with or getting involved with, so this young man or young lady got certain aspects. They got how they got to talk, or how they got to walk, or how they got to act. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why I say we created this. So each individual got to be real with each other. You no, know, it's that's not. Uh, you kind of hit me up with this. We, we living up to somebody's expectations, still living up with our own expectations because we have to live on our a phony life. That's where the ego and pride come in. That's where it comes mm -hmm. from because you got to live up to this young lady expectation yeah. or this young lady got to live up to this young man expectation. But well, both of them is not re reality. Yeah. And, and I think when you're talking about that, that is the reflection of our relationship that we have God. Okay. Because we think God 
well, we don't really think about God's expectations. We think about other people's expectations because if we thought about God's expectation, his word is very clear. He does expect us to be weak at times, you know, because when we admit our weaknesses and when we admit our help, he steps in. But the thing is, it's our fresh, fleshly pride and ego that, you know, overtakes us. Because somewhere in our emotions and in our mindset, we pack all this stuff in instead of letting them out and releasing. And that's why I say you got to be able to have somebody to vent to. You got to be able to have somebody to um, speak to, whether it's you write a poem, whether you get information out on a song. But you have to have an outlet and you have to have an outlet where you have to be true and transparent in that place. And the easiest place is really to go to God first and then God will open up a door for the other place, other places, because when you're feeling a certain way and you have these conversations with God, God always opens up a door. And so that's when I say when you're trying to be strong for other people, allow yourself first to go weak before God. And then that's the first step. And then he will show you how to be transparent and weak in front of everybody. Now, I'm not talking about play the victim. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about when I say, you know, be weak, be show your emotions. I'm not talking about go play the pity party, oh. go play people of emotional strings. I'm not just trying to say go play, woe is me. But what I'm saying is go through the process so you can be in tune with your own emotions, with your own feelings, with your own mental state, so that you're not packing this up inside of you and you have a mental explosion or an emotional explosion or even an spiritual explosion in the wrong place at the wrong time because you didn't process it. Because what happens is you're packing all these emotions and feelings down in your heart and eventually they will overflow. So we, you, you have to find a place where you are true to yourself. And that's what um, my husband was talking about, these expectations that we allow other people to put on us, even ourselves of being so strong, because that's the first level of expectations that we have. You know, this perfection of not crying, not being weak, whatever that looks like to you. But if it is still in your peace of mind, your piece of emotions, your piece just to function because you are focusing on what other people will get out of it. And and we used in the beginning um, being strong for your kids, but same thing applies being strong for your friends, being strong for your parents. You know, a lot of us, all of us, I'm not going to say a lot of us, all of us are going through something. Some of us are abundantly financially wealthy and wealth is not your thing in a financial place, but you may be going through a health loss. You may be going through a mental loss. You may be going through an emotional loss, but the thing is we are all going through something. So we don't need to look at people from the outside and determine that their life is better than ours. What we need to do is we got to hold this mirror up and say, how do I work on the person in the mirror to become real healthy, real whole, so I don't have to pretend to be strong? What does that look like, baby, when I'm not pretending to be strong? Uh, <laughs> I'm calling it actually made that. When I'm pretending to be strong? Yeah. Okay. But I, 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 and I, and I, what, you, what you say was great. Let me add this to it. We've, and we talk about this all the time, especially if you talk to me, how to... Uh, Prepare yourself for a certain situation because it's going to happen. We mm -hmm. have to work out. We have to work out. I, I'm I'm saying Jim, but I, that's not what I'm really talking about. We have to work out, and that, when I mean when I mean by work out, we have to work out on simple situations. Uh, when something simple come up, you don't know how to handle it. We'll say we uh, we gotta deal with that later. Uh, in this rain check, and 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 that's you're not working. You're not getting yourself prepared for it because that little simple thing. And you keep dealing with that little simple thing. That's why to be be a majority thing. Then you got to really deal with. It. But something you said that I, I want you to kind of um, collaborate this on. Do we do we give it to the Almighty Father uh, when we first have difficult issues, or we wait till we get you trying to handle that setting? It's all up, been all out of whack, all been always out of control. Then we go on, and we really 
our mindset is really screwed up now because we've been dealing with this thing for four or five days or four or five months instead of giving to the Almighty Father from the get go. But I want to ask you. Or uh, 40 years or yeah, 40 days yeah. so, wondering on something yeah. we could have just trusted God. Yeah, because it just, it just, I'm thinking about this and the Almighty Father looks at us, say, we already know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, when this, when this young man and young woman will come talk to me and when they come talk to me, just like your kids, you know, you want your kids to come talk to you before a disaster happens. You want your kids to just come deal with me before, before stuff happens. Do we do that with the Almighty Father? Do we go talk to our other friends first, or mom and dad first, or, or anybody, and try to get their opinion? And then we find out their opinion is it done, it done got us all frustrated. Then we take it to the Almighty Father. Do we take it to him? What, do we do? Would, would it be too late, or do we just? Well, it's not too late. I'm it's, talking about before the damage get so big. Well, the damage is never too big for God. I'm talking for us on, from our standpoint. Oh, has it gotten too big for yeah, us? Yes. A lot of times we have waited until it got too big for us. But the thing is, it was really never meant for us to handle it to begin with. So, and that's what I'm saying. The strength, if we realize it was never our fight, something we never had control over, we would never be trying to be strong in that situation. If you find yourself stressing, losing, sleep over it. Ooh. That means the battle is not yours and you need to give it over before it becomes a bigger battle within your own enemy and you're just fighting yourself. Not even resolving this situation. Now don't get me wrong when I say that. that. That don't mean we have no responsibility and we have to not take any actions. But, but what it means is we have to recognize when we are not able to have control over that situation. And when I say that, even when we're telling ourselves we're going to be strong for other people, you really don't even know what that other person is going through. My slightest clue. You, they're looking for you to do something, so you're giving them permission to do it. So a lot of times while they feel, because both, if both of y'all feel like y'all being strong for each other, Nobody cries, nobody crosses, and both of y'all waiting on the other person to see who taps into their emotions first, and nobody ever does it. So that means everybody's always just packing this stuff in. So the thing is, we just let, need to learn how to experience life in our own unique ways, on our own unique journey, without putting our expectations, without putting our judgments, without putting our standards on it. And and I say that even as I guide people on this journey, it is with your specific formula, your specific strategy, according to the scripture, none of us will move the same way on this journey. God has assigned each and every one of us to step and move differently because he's assigned us to different places and he's assigned us to experience different things. Even if we think it's similar to somebody else's, it has something so we can tell somebody else about it, but it is not the exact same experience. So be careful on the journey that you're not trying to emulate somebody else's walk when that is not your journey. So stay in your lane with your strength, with your coach. That's 85% of the problem right there. Oh. When you say don't be emulating some anybody else. That's the that's the that's the 85% of the problem right now. And 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 it, but like we all you and I always talk about the behind the scene, it starts at home. Mm-hmm. You know, and I man, I mean by the way it starts at home is our parents we need to have discussion at least once or twice a week. With our kids. With our kids. Because they have to be taught at home. Because if you'll never bring the subject up, especially coming from your mom and dad, and that's the one that God and your mom and dad brought you into the world, they're the one you get your education from. Because they're not going they're not going to uh, lead you in the wrong direction. But that's what we need to do. We need to have more in-house training. Yeah, and as we transition for what people are calling the new normal. We need to have conversations with our neighbors, with our kids, so that we understand that everybody is struggling with the change, with the loss of 
what is occurring. So everybody is able to express their selves in a healthy way. So having the panel discussions, having the sessions where people can just freely express their selves and no judgment and no pushing your opinions off on other people, just allowing people to feel free in their feelings. Yes, baby. Yes, and help me out on this. Um, we all have the tools to deal with our issues. Mm -hmm. We have the tools. You got to, every each individual got a big old toolbox out there mm -hmm. with tools in it. And you be on, and, and not lifespan, you don't bought the, the tools to deal with all a right. certain part mm -hmm. of life issues. And say, for example, like I'm saying, like I'm a technician. I was dealing with this truck for quite a while mm -hmm. and, and giving me a hard time. Then something to made me scratch my head. Going my van, you got this tool to make this problem a lot more easier. So as soon as I'm in the back of my toolbox and pull this tool out that I ain't seen in quite some time, it me be praying on this on this vehicle I'm working on made the job a lot easier. You and know, see, what? that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking that about. That reminded me of a whoo, I think a Facebook Live we did long, 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 long time ago. Long time ago. It's been ooh, five, six years when we maybe when we first started this journey going on Facebook. I don't even know if it's still on our page, but we did this um, message about having access to the tools, but knowing how to apply them in our life. Yes. A coach is just teaching you to how to apply the tools that you already have. So, you know, you have that's that's in the top drawer, you know, on the left hand side, they're helping you remember where it is, find it, pick it up and use it so you can fix the things that's in front of you so you can keep walking, you know, and that's the thing. So we can keep moving. You're not supposed to wallow in quicksand. So you got something in there that will help you pull you out of that quicksand. you got some ropes, you got some pulleys to help you move in that quicksand that you feel like you're stuck in and you're just drowning in. And let me, let me say this. I'm not belittling anybody's emotions. I'm not telling you they're not real. Right. I'm not telling you not to address them. But I am telling you not to wallow and get stuck in them either so that you feel like you're in quick skin or you're on a roller coaster, on a Ferris wheel. The thing is, we're talking about positive progress. So it is about tapping into the people that will pull you out of the quick singing and that will help you get out of the amusement park and entertainment part of life so that you are having progressive movement. So you're getting beyond a loss. I'm not saying you won't grieve. I'm not saying that you still won't miss the person or miss the financial um, loss, but you will heal and become whole and it will be something better on the other side for you. And I'm not talking about necessarily going to find a new husband, new mate, new love. So I'm not professing. I'm not proclaiming that. I'm not doing a prophetic message about that. But I am just saying that I know and I know and I can prove that there is a godly strategy to get us through everything if we are willing to access the tools in us and then learn how to apply them. And like God's word saying, everything get understanding. And then when you get understanding, you can learn how to apply God's word. So in everywhere, get understanding. So today, um, if I went on this journey, the understanding that I want you to get is stop putting on a face of strong. Stop faking it for people yes, yeah. till you're making it because at some point you begin faking it mm -hmm. so real that you even believe that you're whole and healed. Yes until somebody touches you and you realize that you were only looking the part, but you are unable to actually step in and fulfill the role. So what I want to really get out of this conversation that my wife and Seth has given to you is don't put a lock on your situation. Mm. If you put a lock on it, you're going to mess around and lose the key. And you're going to be mm -hmm. stuck in that situation. So if you're going to put anything on it, just put some tape on it. Because you always pull that tape off because I want to deal with it now. You go in there and wrap the tape and open it, open that, that subject back up again. Then you can go and deal with it. But you put a lock on it, you're going to be stuck in it because you ain't going to find the key. You know, you know, I envisioned, I, I remember we had these little number locks on our doors in this house. And the thing is, what can happen is the number, can you forget it? And that's why I say you forget what you're faking. And now you can't even get back into that place no more to the digital code. Because there are plenty of times we were at the door like, what's the number? Mm -hmm. Is it the pound? Is it the blah, blah, blah? And of course, 
your key is in the inside that's supposed to be for emergency use so you're outside locked out your own house outside your own peace outside your own mind outside your own emotions and you are acting a fool because you don't know how to get in now don't get me wrong we, we finally remember what the code was to get in the house you know but then there are times that the battery or the disconnect can happen so all of that when you are just dependent on punching these buttons to keep it together <laughs> when you lose the capability to keep it together that same thing with passwords to it yeah oh boy, oh boy. When that's, you, a, that's another topic of passwords yeah but when you lose the capability to keep it together and it's only because you're faking it that's what i said you're trying to hold something together for other people when you are not even good glue yourself but man, man, you have to find you have to fake when you're in a certain crowd. You need to delete yourself now. Mm -hmm. If you can't be real, be authentic, be, and I'm talking about anybody in your life that does anybody. not, anybody. that does, that cannot allow you to be your true, authentic self. And I'm not talking about an evil person because some of us do need to change and make adjustments yes, in yes. our life, and we need to pull away from everybody until God works mm -hmm. on us. But the thing is, you will have people who can be honest with you and sit with you through that work, through that process. Nobody is meant to be alone. But the whole point is you don't have to pretend to be somebody else. And if you are doing that, yeah, that's not the, the right crowd, not right people. Because your kids, your parents, and everybody should understand all of us experience things in a different way. So we should allow everybody that space and grace to experience it that way. So if you want to reach us and be a part of any of our grief set strategy sessions or just see other things that we're talking about and get access to the tools and learn how to apply the tools, definitely jump over on our Instagram at the Grief Garage or text us at 678-718-5019 to get a part of a healthy grief conversation. So just text us healthy grief conversation or jump on to the IG at Grief Garage and you will see more information uploading there on different topics we talk about. Yeah, we're constantly changing all the every day of the week. Changing oil, that's right, baby. We constantly changing our oil because you know, if the oil gets dirty and nasty, then the engine busts up and then we just broke down on the side of the road and there won't be any more moves to be made. So if you don't leave with anything else today, allow yourself a space of weakness. Allow yourself to have a place of vulnerability. Find the people, find the place, find the way to do it so you can process it and teach other people how to process it so we don't get stuck in this place where people are not grieving and tapping in to the process that is meant to be because it's a season that God has called because grief is good. That call life rules. Not that we can do about it. They're going to come. All right, babe, I'll get you a cup of coffee. I want some tea. Making moves beyond loss. I'm Courtney Lee Smith. I'm Fulton Smith. Maybe